This is a presentation of 5 tips on leg vein treatment. We consider these tips the key for succeeding when treating veins with transdermal laser. Tip number 1. Comprehensive and precise diagnosis. We conceived a classification table to place the venous context. The patients receive a score from 9 to 1 in a decreasing fashion of complexity. 9 is the most severe while 1 is the goal to be achieved. 1 means no varicosities or telangiectasias. Following the table on the first line, varicose veins with any kind of reflux from the saphenous vein. On the second line, varicose veins but no reflux from the saphenous vein. On the third line, no varicosities. On the first row, telangiectasias combined with feeder veins. On the second row, telangiectasias devoid of feeder veins. And on the third and last row, no telangiectasias. This classification helps us to select a treatment plan in a glance. Scores 9 to 7 generally need a more invasive initiative. Note that patients scoring 2 are the best results for any kind of sclerotherapy for the absence of feeder veins and varicosities. Tip number 2. Go for the feeder vein. Blame not the method. There are three ways to clinically estimate if a telangiectasia or a group of them is related to a feeder vein. First, naked eye visualization. Second, decompression test. And third, lack of response to treatment. Besides clinical exam, feeder veins may be found through contrast venogram, transillumination, ultrasound, and now the vein viewer. Tip number three, the convenient use of the vein viewer. The vein viewer allows the visualization of feeder veins that are normally too deep for naked eye and too shallow for ultrasound detection. It also gives the practitioner a 40 cm headroom for manipulation. Additionally, its image is continuous, so the presence of blood dynamically shows the effective collapse of the vessel from the laser shots. Tip number 4. Synergy between methods. 12 years ago, we started to combine injection sclerotherapy after intense pulse light. This association was presented in Dallas 2004. This combination is now called CLAX, cryolaser with cryosclerotherapy. Many of us agree that on leg veins, transdermal lasers were not the gold standard. But nowadays, 1064 long pulse lasers achieved selective photothermolysis. The laser action is very focal and when employed adequately, it is a very effective method. The laser we use nowadays is the 1064 Harmony. And to numb the skin we use the Cryo 6 cooling device. Settings we use today are 60 milliseconds post duration and the fluence of 120 to 150 for feeder veins and small varicose veins. After treating the feeder veins, to treat the telangiectasias, we change the post durations to 40 milliseconds, keeping the fluence. In both situations, we are allowed a second and even a third pass. After the laser shots, the sclerosant is injected also under cooling where the vessel is still open. And this is the result after 4 CLAX sessions. Tip number 5. Picture everything. Patients often don't remember their initial state. More than once, I thought that I wasn't succeeding before repeating the picture and comparing it to the control. Believe it or not, after 7 months of treatment, this patient was still insisting that her legs were not responding. The 9 to 1 score translates a treatment-oriented table. It helps to avoid misdiagnosis and consequently treatment failure. Photoplethysmography subsequent to ultrasound evaluate the functional state caused by the reflux. Both help placing patients on the first and second line. The vein viewer is crucial to find invisible feeder veins and to prevent that patients on the first left row end up on the center row. 
Moreover, before and after photo show to the patient the valuable treatment done. Here are some examples. Conclusion Using this peculiar combination of light, sugar and cold air, we were able to avoid phlebectomies in 86% of 140 patients scoring 6 to 3 on the table you've seen. And more importantly, avoiding complications like skin ulcers, anaphylaxis and embolism.